Hi, everybody. It's Marla from Dog Care on Air, and I'm here today with Joan Ranquette. She's going to be speaking about EFT for animals and their humans. EFT is a healing method that quiets the nervous system. It spurs emotional healing, helps shift behavior, lessens performance anxiety, and helps alleviate physical pain. Learn how to use energy to heal the physical and emotional issues on both animals and humans. So Joan's gonna guide us through setting personal and group intentions for, for her workshop, and she'll give you an overview of EFT, explain how it works, and how you can use EFT points for humans, and she'll also show you how to use it on your dog. Joan is an animal communicator. She's a TEDx speaker, Hay House and Sounds True author, educator, and animal parent. She is connected with animals professionally for over 25 years. In 2009, Joan founded Communication with All Life University, a certification program for animal communicators and energy healers. She lives on a farm in the gorgeous hills of Southern California with her devoted animal family, two horses, two dogs, and four cats. She donates her time towards animal rescue missions and therapeutic riding centers. Welcome, Joan. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, and thank you for your interest in EFT. Yeah, it's I, when we were speaking about EFT and having you on as an educator, I'm, I've been very familiar with using EFT with humans, but using with dogs is such a neat process, so I'm really excited to have you share that with us. Yeah, I'm excited to share it. All right, so let's start. Um, talk to us about the emotional freedom technique. Um, and where it began. Okay, well, um, EFT, or Emotional Freedom Technique, was um, created by Gary Craig. And um, it originally came out of the EMDR, which if you know anything about EMDR, it's, um, it is a, a, a healing technique that um, uses a left and right hemisphere to clear a trauma. So you might do something like look with your eyes. You might do something um, with patting either side. Anyway, it ends up being it ended up being something that only practitioners like therapists could use. And so it wasn't something that anybody could number one do on their own, and number two uh, be able to do with someone else. And so EFT came out of that, and it is proves to be just as powerful as far as uh, really bringing down the nervous system um, with emotional things like trauma. And part of the, uh, you know, it's, you're not going to forget the trauma or forget the experience, but you're not going to be as triggered by it. And that's the most important thing is that you aren't as triggered by it. And then, um, what what happens with the technique itself is that it is a very specific um it's specific points specific acupressure points and then it, you're saying certain setup phrases and then you eventually create a way to go into a transition and move out of that so let me uh break this down even more so first of all the points, the EFT points that we use, they're very specific and we'll go to that in a moment. If you look at these points, they're all acupressure points and every acupressure point is connected to a meridian and that meridian is connected to a, an organ system and that organ system is connected to an emotion. So if you take something like... Um, uh, um, uh, the liver can be anger, the lungs can be grief, the heart is joy. So each of these points have a certain connection to an emotion. And so as we look at how this works, putting it all together, it, help, it helps on all levels. Um, it helps mentally, physically, and emotionally. And if we think about the idea that even if we're in an emotional state, we're not going to have the same mental clarity. So it helps mentally if we were to release a lot of the emotion or the, the big triggered emotion behind any sort of event. Um, and a lot of times there's definitely a 
mental physical component, mental and emotional component to physical pain. So it helps physically. Um, and again, when you start to get, when we think of the whole being, the body, mind, spirit, we there's there's a definite relationship between the physical and the emotional and even our sense of hope, our spirit. So it it's very powerful. It's a very powerful technique for humans. And when would you use EFT? When, give us some examples of when you use it. Well, as I've been an animal communicator for, you know, a million years. So I first started using it with people um, when I didn't start using it on animals right away. I started using it with people who had had something like, let's say they had walked outside and their dog had been attacked by another dog. And then every time they walked outside with their dog, they might be totally on guard. And then their dog became like more of the aggressor in complete protection. So I used it with humans that were, um, overwhelmed by an experience they had with their dog, or maybe they were bitten by a dog and they wanted to get a dog, but they were afraid of dogs. So I've used it originally. I used it for people um, that had big feelings with their animals, and that could even be performance anxiety. So I used it for people who had had events with their dogs that were, you know, like they'd been bit, like the dog had been attacked, or their dog was the attacker. Um, I used it a lot for leash aggression for the human to not be so um, scared walking outside with their dog on a leash. And I've used it a lot with performance. So people that would get, especially like in dog shows in the obedience class where they'd kind of lose it halfway through the class and then their dog is looking at them going, what are we doing? And then they wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't get all their titles. So it helped a lot in the dog show ring. It helped a lot with, um, with, with behaviors, shifting behaviors. But from the human standpoint, that's how I started with it. Great. So let's talk about the points, where they are. Yeah, so we start with the karate chop point, which is right here on the side. And then we move to the inside of the eye, to the outside of the eye, to under the eye, to under the nose, under the lips to the collarbone and then in most people things the spleen point which is here under the armpit um, and then top of the head i've kind of uh, modified it a bit from traditional eft just because it's one thing for me to reach around and grab do my own spleen point but if i'm tapping on a dog and it's been an aggressive dog I don't want to get bitten and that surprise of my hand coming around the side. So I just about 15 years ago took it out, but and it still works. So, and, and the way that we get started is to do something where, um, you know, we're setting up a phrase. And so you take the big emotion that's going on. So let's say, I'm going to walk outside with my dog and I've got a big, you know, I see that there's other dogs and let's pretend my dog has anxiety, leash aggression. We'll just take that one and for dogs. And so I would use the karate chop point with a statement phrase of like, even though I get so nervous when my dog walks outside. And so you're getting the feeling you're you're giving again this is emotional freedom technique so we don't have to be super smart here we just have to kind of nail down the emotion so if i'm walking outside with my dog and my dog is leash aggressive it makes me nervous so nervous might be the first first phrase i would use for myself um so i would say even though i feel really nervous about going outside i completely love and accept myself even though I am so nervous to go outside, I love and accept myself. And so that's how you basically set up the EFT. And then from there, um, and you, you, when you think about there's a beginning, a middle, and an end, and you just you want to be able to um, 
get all of that in the whole in the whole script. And so with the EFT tapping for humans, um, you're going to, you know, so you might say, even though I am so nervous going outside, um, but you know what I was thinking, it would be really fun to tap with you if you wouldn't mind, Marla. Do you have a challenge with um, a dog? Yeah. Um, so Vegas, when he's inside, he's really, really playful and fun and great and then as soon as we get outside we're walking him in the dog park he gets really timid and nervous and he kind of like drools <laughs> and he doesn't really get oh, in there okay. and play with the dogs so i kind of feel sad for him that he's not able to do that so what i would do is i would set up all of these these points i would go through all of my feelings on it so we would go to um, the in. So I would do the setup phrase of even though I'm upset about this, and I'll go more specifically. Then we'd go to the first point would be inside of the eye. The next point is going to be outside of the eye. Then we're going to go under the eye. Then we're going to go under the nose. Then we're going to go under the lips. And then we're going to go to the collarbone. Then we're going to go to the top of the head. Okay. Um, so let's, and so those are the points. Okay, great. Okay, so why don't we do the demo together? Just one second. I would love to do that. Okay, yeah. great. Okay, let's do this. So Vegas has um, gets timid and nervous and drools and clings to you guys. Yeah, he pretty much stays right beside us when we're in the dog park. He doesn't he, he he doesn't really play all that freely. And in a perfect world, what would you what would he do? He would, you know, go up to dogs, do the dog thing, sniff and and play and run around, like really run freely. But he, you know, he he'll come up to a dog and if if they start moving in, in, a, in a way that might be more aggressive or, or playful, he kind of backs away and comes back to us. He's sort of like, I'm not sure if I, want, I really want to get involved in this. Okay. And, if, and when you think about that behavior of his, how does it make you feel? How do you feel about that? I feel sad. And I, and I um, yeah, I feel sad. Maybe, maybe I even feel a little anxious about you know, not knowing what to do for him and, and, but mostly it's like sad that he's not able to express himself because he's such a great dog. Okay. Ready? Yes. All right. So starting with Karate Chop, even though I don't know what to do about Vegas and I feel really nervous. Even though I don't know what to do about Vegas and I feel really nervous. And I feel a little helpless. And I feel a little helpless. And I completely love and accept myself. And I completely love and accept myself. Even though I take Vegas to the dog park. Even though I take Vegas to the dog park. And he gets nervous and anxious. And he gets nervous and anxious. And he doesn't play. And he doesn't play. And I get really sad. And I get really sad. And I still love and accept myself. And I still love and accept myself. Even though I take Vegas to the dog park and I sit there and watch. Even though I take Davis, uh, Vegas to the dog park and I sit there and watch. And he just gets kind of awkward. And just gets kind of awkward. And I get awkward. And I get awkward. And I honor the choices I made to bring him there. And I honor the choices I make to bring him there. Okay, now we're going to tap through the points. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I feel like Vegas should be so excited to go to the dog park. I feel like Vegas should be so excited to go to the dog park. I'm excited to go to the dog park. I'm excited to go to the dog park. And then we get to the dog park. And then we get to the dog park. 
And Vegas gets all weird. And Vegas gets all weird. He starts to drool. He starts to drool. He doesn't play with others. He doesn't play with others. He keeps coming back to us. He keeps coming back to us. He's not out there. He's not out there. And then I get really sad. And then I get really sad. I get sad. I get sad. I get really sad. I get really sad. I get sad that he's missing out on all that dog stuff. I get sad that he's missing out on all that dog stuff. He's missing out. He's missing out. And when he comes back to us. And when he comes back to us. He's anxious. He's anxious. And I don't like to see him anxious. And I don't like to see him anxious. I feel helpless. I feel helpless. I don't know what to do for him. I don't know what to do for him. And then I get anxious. And then I get anxious. And it's this whole thing. And it's this whole thing. I'm sad. I'm sad. I'm anxious. I'm anxious. I'm helpless. I'm helpless. I just want the best for him. I just want the best for him. He's such a loving, fun guy. He's such a loving, fun guy. And maybe I'm just projecting onto him. Maybe I'm just projecting onto him. Maybe he wants to just be a loving, fun guy with just us. Maybe he just wants to be a loving, fun guy with just us. Maybe he doesn't want to go to the park. Maybe he doesn't want to go to the park. Or maybe there are other ways to have exercise with him. Or maybe there are other ways to have exercise with him. Maybe I should let go of my expectation of the dog park. Maybe I should let go of my expectation of the dog park. (laughs) Maybe it's not all that fun. Maybe it's not all that fun. Maybe it's kind of weird for Vegas. Maybe it's kind of weird for Vegas. Be kind of like going to a nightclub if you're not in the mood. It's kind of like going to the nightclub to a nightclub if you're not in the mood. Be weird. It'd be weird. I'm going to let it go. I'm going to let it go. And I'm going to go ahead and accept that he's a fun guy at home. And I'm going to go and accept that he's a fun guy at home. And that maybe if I don't put pressure on him, he will go and sniff a dog's butt. And maybe if I don't put pressure on him, maybe he will go and sniff a dog's butt. Maybe I just need to release my expectations. Maybe I need to just release my expectations. I'm releasing my expectations. I'm releasing my expectations. I'm going to let Vegas be whoever he needs to be. I'm going to let Vegas be whoever he needs to be. Because Vegas is awesome just as he is. Because Vegas is awesome just the way he is. Okay, now take a deep breath. (sighs) And do you think you could be neutral with him at the dog park? Yes. What great insight that was, Joan. I think, really, I think he's a great guy. He's so great. And just, these could, this could just be my expectations of what, you know, a happy dog life would be. So, yeah. I can yeah. He may already have a happy dog life. Yeah. Yeah. I think, oh, he does. <laughs> yeah. So many ways. Fantastic. Yeah. So he's not going to be happier. He is, he is happy. Right. Exactly. That was fantastic. Okay. Um, okay, good. Let's, let's go on to like how you actually use this on dogs. Cause like, I just had a really great experience using it with, you know, my hmm. relationship with Vegas, a dog, but how do you actually use it yeah. on dogs? 
Well, how I do it with dogs, and again, you know, there aren't a lot of people that do EFT on animals. And so I actually came, I started doing it on horses because I had a horse that uh, I was, I was with um, a client called me and said their horse was going after ponies at a horse show and that would be really dangerous and while they were riding. So I went and I actually just had this crazy idea to tap on the horse and um, it worked. It was very successful. The horse was calmed down about the ponies and I'm lucky because I'm an animal communicator. So I got to use the animal communication to come up with the story. But I'm, I'm saying that you don't have to be an animal communicator, obviously. You know what some of the things are that are going on for your own animal. Um, so then I started doing it on dogs. And especially since I already had a relatively big clientele of people I'd done it on because of situations like the dog aggression, leash aggression, plain old aggression, where I had only dealt with how the people felt about it. I then went... And, and dog shows. I then went and um, worked with um, as many of those people again. I put it out in a newsletter that I'd love to try it on their dogs. And so I started really playing with it with dogs. And it was, um, it was amazing. And I, yeah, it was absolutely amazing. And I um, also, um, so it's the same, it's the same sort of thing, except I'll tell you this. I usually tap on the person first. And let's say it's my own situation, if you were going to do this at home. If I tapped on myself about how I felt about how my animal was doing, I don't need to do a karate chop point then for the animal because I'm going to go directly into the tapping for the animal at that point. And so it's the same thing. It's the inside of the eye. It's outside of the eye. It's under the eye. It's on top of the nose. It's under the chin. And we'll go through the points in a minute. But um, again all of those acupressure points have really important uh, meaning for them and emotionally. And I will say that for dogs under the eye for dogs and horses and cats, it's a very powerful calming point. Um, and there's ways that I'll talk about in a moment that you can do on animals. If you can't touch their face, cause like, let's say you have a really head shy dog or somebody who's really annoyed by the tapping. There's other things you can do. Um, well, I'll just go ahead and say it. So the, 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 a couple of other things you could do is you could surrogate tap, which we're going to surrogate tap maybe on Vegas. Um, you can surrogate tap. So I will sit here and tap on my dog on behalf of Vegas. Um, the other thing you could do is you could tap down their back because the, the bladder meridian runs along their back and it has a lot of the association points that are connected to these same points here um, on a dog and on humans. So let, if you can't touch their face, maybe you can tap down their back. Um, and you can also um, just tap into the air or tap on a teddy bear or a, a, a stuffed dog. So there's lots of different ways if you can't tap on the dog. Um, so that's, uh, that's, really kind of tapping on the dog. And then some of the ways that I've used it, I'll tell you my favorite way that I've used this is um, often uh, I've gone in and if dogs, I love to find kind of the most unadoptable dog in um, shelters because I've found that like there was at best friends of the animals here in LA, there was a dog that was so timid that she just hid back in this cubby hole thing. And after tapping on her just once, she started coming out more for people. So being able to help them get rid of their anxiety or their timidity um, in the shelter helps them come out and kind of exhibit themselves a little better. Um, and the same is true with, with like aggression or just high anxiety where they're not, they, they, they just don't present themselves well. So I love using it in shelters. Um, I've used it a lot for very shy dogs, for... Um, uh, dogs that are just kind of uncomfortable in their own skin when they've first been adopted. Um, it's really great for working on animals when they're first adopted because, you know, first of all, they're, they've left a situation, so there's grief, and then they're coming into a new situation, so there can be anxiety. So it's a wonderful thing for newly adopted animals. Um, it's also great for um, animals that uh, dogs 
like I said earlier, the dog shows, the, the dogs that get nervous at dog shows, or if their person gets nervous and they just kind of blow the whole thing off, they're like, whatever, she's being weird. Um, it's a great thing to just ground them. And it's just a great, um, I've used it for uh, dogs that do not get along. I've used it for dogs that didn't like the other human in the, in the household. I mean, it's just a myriad of experiences with it. So it's, it's really powerful. Sounds great. Um, so these are the, these are the points on the dog, which is very similar to human. Yes, very similar. And then, um, and then again, like the top of the head, I, you know, I tend to just sit here and tap on myself on the top of the head, but dogs really love it. If you just kind of even take that tapping down top of their head, even to the back, cause there's a big, you know, the nerve centers in the back there. So it just feels really good for them to, when they start relaxing into it. How, how deep do you tap? Like what, what's the. I'm super light. Yeah. You know, one thing about animals is less is more, you, you know, I know people like the big deep tissue massage, but the less and the lighter the touch you do on an animal often, the more response you're going to get because they're so energetic to begin with. Nice. Okay. So here are the tapping points in summary, what we're going to go through. And yeah. So it's yeah. inside of the eye, outside of the eye, under the eye, then it's the top of the nose, under the chin, inside of the chest, and on the top of the head. Okay, great. So in a second, we're, we're going to go and do a demonstration of how to do EFT on your dog you're going to bring out delilah i am delilah 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 Del okay this is delilah hi and uh we're going to surrogate tap as if she's vegas and so what i'd love for you to do marla is to Almost tap into the air as if you're tapping, like you're going to set your intention that you're tapping on Vegas. Okay. And so I want us to imagine that if we are Vegas and, you know, we're super cute at home, we feel really confident at home, and we don't love the park, and then it gets even weirder that they want, these people want me to love the park so much. Just I'm going, going to tap from that perspective on Delilah, and can you still see her even though she buried her head? She's a little bit out of the screen. Okay, there we go. <laughs> All right. So, and, and the one thing that's fun about this is um, she will, um, animals have certain releases, and I'll talk about this in a minute, that you know that you're starting to get through, that they're starting to process emotionally. And I have found that whenever she starts to process, that other animal is also processing. So um, I want you to just, in your mind's eye for a moment, Marla, imagine Vegas and all of Vegas's fun at home. And just even close your eyes. And you're going to, um, you're going to echo me. And you're going to tap in the air as if you're tapping on Vegas. And I'm going to use Delilah as a Vegas surrogate also. Are you ready? Ready. Thank you, Delilah. <laughs> <laughs> She says, you're welcome. Okay. <laughs> so, oh, I can't believe it. Oh, I can't believe it. They're taking me to the park again. Taking me to the park again. I mean, I kind of like the park. I kind of like the park. But I don't love the park. But I don't like the park. I love being with them. I love being with them. I love being with my people. I love being with my people. Dogs are okay. Dogs are okay. But I have fun with my people. But I have fun with my people. Every now and then there's a fun dog. Every now and then there's a fun dog. But I'm the most fun dog. But I'm the most fun dog. 
I really want them to see. I really want them to see. That we could do something else. That we could do something else. We can get other exercise. We can get other exercise. We're having fun. We're having fun. We have fun on our own. We have fun on our own. I hate to disappoint them. I hate to disappoint them. But I don't know what to do at the park. But I don't know what to do at the park. <laughs> it just gets kind of weird. It just gets kind of weird. And I don't know what to do. And I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I get anxious. I get anxious. I get anxious. I get anxious. I don't want to be anxious. I don't want to be anxious. I want to just have fun. I want to just have fun. I want to have fun. I want to have fun. I want to have fun. I want to. I will try and have fun at the park. I will try and have fun at the park. I am going to be open to having fun at the park. I'm going to be open to having fun at the park. We're going to create a whole new way to be at the park. We're going to create a whole new way to be at the park. I'm going to have fun at the park. I'm going to have fun at the park. We're going to have fun wherever we are. We're going to have fun wherever we are. And I'm not going to worry about them. I'm not going to worry about them. I don't want to disappoint them. I don't want to disappoint them. So I'm going to be more open. 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 So, uh, and then take a deep breath. And so what with, uh, with Delilah, I could feel like a lot of her breathing changed. And I, I think what happens when we tap on our animals is we all of a sudden gain a different perspective on why they're doing something. We might find out it has nothing to do with us, or we might find out that it has um, everything to do with us. But, uh, you know, I mean, I think in, in Vegas' situation, if you're releasing the expectation and he is able to be more open, you're going to have a different experience at the park. And I can't wait to hear about it. But um, I could feel her breathing start to change, which makes me know that, and she just took a big sigh, that she's starting to release kind of the pressure of like, I've got to be really this kind of dog at the park. Um, and the other thing that a dog will do when they're starting to process is they'll lick and chew their breathing will change, their eyes will soften, and her eyes, she shut her eyes through the whole thing, and just was like, okay, and now she's resting deeply. Um, so those are the sorts of things that you can start, that help you know that you're on the right track, that you're really helping the animal release whatever emotion they're pretty stuck with. Well, that was a really, a really fun process, I'd say, and a little, really interesting um, way to just, just to notice how your dog responded to the EFT process. Um, and could you give the viewers just some idea of how you come up with the language, like the way you, I know, I mean, it does take time to get that flow of language. Yeah. Say, right. Cause everything that you said just rung so true for me when you said, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, being at the park isn't, isn't so much fun for me. And, you know, I can, I can find other ways to tell everybody where to be and, you know, we can find other ways to have fun. And so can you tell, talk a little bit more, more about how you come up with that dialogue? Yeah, I just really, I mean, first and foremost, I mean, partly because I've been an animal communicator forever. I, I, I kind of know the simplicity of how animals are not, thinking and feeling but it's just not as layered and complex as the way we think and feel and so I try to drill it down to the most simple form that like it's it's whatever the emotion is like let's say it was 
um, strictly an anxiety. Okay, let's say for that dog I was talking about in the um, at Best Friends that was completely hiding in her cubby hole if there were people around. And I just literally tapped on the emotion forever. And I couldn't even get into her cage. Her volunteer tapped on her. But um, I just tapped on the, I'm afraid. When I see people, I'm afraid. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. And then eventually when I saw the breathing change, I started in on, um, maybe people aren't so bad. Maybe I could give this more of a chance. Maybe I could release my fear. Maybe I could. So I just stayed with one emotion through the whole thing. But I think with, you know, with Vegas, the park is weird and he's trying to please you and then he gets confused. Right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, you know, it's, I think, you know, there's a part of him that wants to like, okay, I'll still try this park thing. But, you know, there, so there's kind of two, two running themes there. There's the, this is awkward for me and I want to please the people. And that, that's a pretty common thing is whatever it is. Like I'm anxious about this and I'm trying to please my people. So when people start to do this with their own pets, like would you recommend just, just start dialoguing, like just whatever comes to mind, just speak it. Yeah. Right. Like don't, don't, don't try to like, say it out loud, it, say it out loud and then it'll start to flow and you'll become more comfortable, more comfortable with the, with the dialogue as you go on and you, and you, and you keep repeating it. Absolutely. And the, and the main thing is, again, it's not intellectual freedom technique, so you don't have to be smart <laughs> about it. It's emotional freedom technique. So just stay with what you think their emotion is. And with you, just stay with your own emotion and let it flow. That's great advice. Thanks, Joan. Really enjoyed this. Yeah, thank you. you. So tell, tell everybody how we can get in touch with you and get some more information. Well, my website, you can always go to my website. And then I also have, I have an ongoing, um, I have a, a book club because I have a couple books up, but one of them is called Energy Healing for Animals. And we talk about EFT and that's coming up in the book club. So that's, uh, the book club is really fun. And it's once a week in, on Tuesdays in my Facebook group called Learn to Communicate with Animals with Joan. And um, it's a free place to come. I've got lots of master classes on animal communication and all sorts of other fun things. Sounds good. And we'll have that posted on the broadcast page for people to access. And I want to thank you again for educating, educating us about EFT with humans and animals. Um, yeah, thanks for joining us. Thank you. This was really fun.